many thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so this is going to be stress-free painting. I've traced down my drawing this way. You can, of course, draw it freehand, but we do provide you with a free trace down drawing and reference photograph, and I'll tell you later how you can obtain them. All of the materials that I'm going to be using, including this little palette here, I will link in the description box underneath this video, but as always, use what you have. I match my colours by making a colour chart like this, and I'll explain to you how to make one and how to use one in the information card on the top of your screen. These are the colours that I've decided to use, but as I say, use what you have. I have a clean glass of water, some kitchen paper, and we are good to go. Watercolour application is all about building up your layers and letting each layer dry before applying the next. So to begin with, and because this is stress-free painting, we're going to start by mixing a really watery mix of the first washes. So for this, I'm mixing cadmium yellow pale, opera, and a mixture of the both in the middle. This is my number eight size round brush. This is a synthetic brush from Zen Art. Really brilliant for applying your first wash because you have a nice, um, nice fine point with this and you can cover quite a few areas quite quickly because it's a nice sort of chunky size. Just dropping in the opera as you can see here. I'm not just strictly um, sticking to the colours on the photograph, I just felt like adding a little bit of artistic licence and I felt that by adding the yellow tones it just gave it a little bit of an extra boost. You can see me just dropping in the opera colour here, just dropping it into the wet paint just to give us our base layers on which we will apply later. Now, when you're working with watercolour, everybody knows that it has that kind of tricky, ugly duckling stage. So if you are new to painting, I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see that tricky stage unfold, that tricky process go away and um, see how this uh, watercolour process comes to life as we work through the painting tutorial. So I'm just dropping in um, some of the opera colour here on this little petal on this side. And by applying the paint and just blending it in with my smaller brush, this forms the basis on which we will build our application of more paint later on. This will take the guesswork out of the darker tones that we are going to apply, which means that it won't be as scary. You'll notice that I've got a small puddle of water in the middle of my palette. This really helps with the paint application process because you're not flooding your brush with water in the big jar. See how I'm patting my brush dry on the kitchen paper to stop any um, excess paint going onto the paper, which makes it difficult to control. The paper that I'm using is mixed media. This one's by De La Rowney, and it does make the blending process really, really easy. So I'm just dropping in the colours as you can see here and now I'm mixing, this is Permanent Rose, this one is by Windsor and & Newton and notice how I'm just using the tip of my number zero brush, this one's from Pan Art but use whichever brushes that you have with a fine point. I'm working this on wet paint so that you can see by applying this paint right up to the pencil line with this little brush, it's gently merging into the head of the tulip like this to give it a nice soft look. By cleaning my brush and patting it onto my kitchen paper, I'm just blending it through and I'll continue the process on all of the other petals of the flower heads. So by painting this way, it really is stress-free because by applying these lighter washes, it takes the guesswork out and it means that you can apply your darker tones later on with a lot more confidence. The key is to use a really light touch and to make sure that every layer is dry before applying the next. So I'm mixing a slightly thicker mix here of permanent rose and continuing to drop it into the damp paint like this. We'll apply the subsequent layers when this is dry. And I'll continue the process on all of the other flower heads. Cleaning my brush, patting it dry and blending it through. 
this application process is something that I use all the time and it just makes application really really easy and I have done a full length video on this if this is something you'd like to see then I will link it on the top of your screen so that you can click through and watch it later on so I'm just dropping in a little bit of the orange tone here just to add a little bit of interest, as I said, I'm not going strict to, strictly to the reference photograph. We're just using that reference photograph as a guide. So I've done the same on all the other petals and I'm mixing another thicker mix here of permanent rose. So now that we have that first wash in place, notice how I'm going around the existing color with the darker tone, like I said, taking the guesswork out. So we'll know at this point exactly where we're going to go with our darker tones, making it far less scary and much more relaxing. A few months ago we did a similar video where we painted a little rose in a jar and this video was very very popular and if you'd like to have a look at it I'll link it on the top of your screen for you to take a look later on. And we don't have to be absolutely photo accurate, just getting used to handling this medium. This is what it's all about. Getting to know how your paint reacts to your paper. If you use a different type of paper, that could make a difference. But like I said, this is all about stress-free painting, enjoying the process. And if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. If you're using mixed media paper, the mistakes are easily remedied. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that we have a free trace down line drawing and reference photograph to accompany this and all of our tutorials here on YouTube. To access the photographs and line drawings, you can join our Facebook group. We are a fast growing, amazing community over there and you can have access to all of our photographs and line drawings that accompany our tutorials right here on YouTube. Um, I will put the link in the description box underneath this video, but if you're not on Facebook and you want to have access, I will put the line drawing and the reference photograph right at the end of this video so that you can screenshot them and print them out that way. So be sure to stay right until the end where you can have access to both of those. We launch brand new tutorials on our YouTube channel every Tuesday. So if that's something that interests you, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so that you don't miss new content every time it's released. If you are enjoying this video, do show me some love and give it a big thumbs up. It's a free way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying this video so that more people can see it. We are also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour. Do take a look. We have plenty of behind the scenes stuff, things that are coming up on YouTube. So do consider giving us a follow. This is my flat synthetic brush and I'm using it to blend in the paint where it dries. When watercolour dries, it can leave a sort of um, untidy edge, a sort of hard edge. And by just using a damp synthetic brush like this, we can take that away quite simply, but make sure that your paint is completely dry before you do this. Okay, let's get on to our lovely green tones. So I've started off by mixing three di different puddles of cadmium yellow pale, and I'm adding to this French ultramarine. This is all by Windsor and Newton, and you can see the different puddles that I've added there, the different um, amount of blue that I've added. We've got a more bluey mix where we've added a tiny bit more of the blue pigment going through to the yellowy greens like this. Once again, stress-free painting, just applying that paint straight onto the paper, wet on dry. This time I'm using my number four synthetic round brush. This is a silver line brush by Jackson's and 
As always, I will link them in the box underneath this video. So this has been applied wet on dry, which means we're applying it straight onto the paper. Notice how I'm just using the tip of my brush and taking it right down to the edge of the jar like this. And just continue in the process. Now painting is all about relaxing and enjoying the process and making sure that you find time for yourself in our busy lives that we lead is really really important. Which is why I turned to Skillshare who are the sponsors of today's video so let's just take a look. Skillshare are an online learning platform with thousands of classes and members across 150 countries. Skillshare is a place to gain inspiration and learn new skills because they have so many different classes to choose from. Just type what you're looking for into the search bar and Skillshare will show you different classes at different levels and of course different class lengths. The class that I decided to take was called Modern Meditation by Justin Michael Williams. Justin's approach to meditation is really unique and Justin's course is broken down into daily classes and is easy to follow and very inspiring. Justin even provides you with a downloadable workbook so that you can record how you feel after each session which is very very helpful. If this is something that interests you, the first 1000 people to use the link in my description box or my code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so just carrying on the process, you can see I'm using this bluey mix here. So this is more French ultramarine with a tiny bit of yellow to create this soft blue gray tone. To create the lighter tones, all we're doing is adding more water. I'm just carrying on, flitting between the green tones and the bluey tones and it really doesn't matter and I've just noticed that this little part here which I thought was a leaf was actually a petal but hey it doesn't matter we'll make it a leaf. It's all part of the process and it doesn't really matter. Okay so everything's dry and I'm applying the darker mix here so this is French ultramarine with a tiny bit of cadmium yellow pale and just following those pencil lines. As I said, we're just using the reference photograph as a guide. And don't worry about your greens being an accurate color, just mix them up to have different tones of green. So in other words, what you want to do is mix your yellow color first and just add in different ratios of the blue tone that you may have. You can use French ultramarine, you can use cerulean, whichever blue you have, but French ultramarine is usually something that people have within their palettes and it's a really good blue to mix your green tones with. I think the important thing is just having a variation of green tones rather than a flat looking green. So now that we've applied that first wash, as before, we know where we're going with our darker values, which takes the guesswork out of it and makes it a little bit more relaxing. Cleaning my brush and patting it through as I would ordinarily do, blending in those colors and softening in those edges. Just continuing to build up those colors. Use any brush that you have with a fine point. So as long as you have that nice sort of sharp edge, that's what you're looking for. Now I'm using the darker value again. So this is French ultramarine with a tiny bit of cadmium yellow pale. And you can see that I'm not taking the color all the way down. 
just blending it through and just leaving a little bit of the initial wash showing underneath. This adds a little bit of interest and it shows that, that there are darker values within that particular element. So you can see how I'm applying that darker colour and not taking it all the way down, just to give a little bit of a darker value as you can see, but retaining the first wash that we applied. So you can always see that lovely first wash coming through underneath your darker values. This is what watercolour is all about and makes it such a joyful medium to work with. You can just build up your colours really, really slowly to create the depth of colour that you need. The trick is making sure that each layer is dry before you apply the next, otherwise your painting will become overworked and muddy. And I'm sure that's a phrase that you've, you've heard many times if you're familiar with watercolour. It's something I see on all our social media groups, oh, my painting looks overworked. That's because you haven't let your paint dry properly or maybe that you've added too many layers too thickly, too quickly. So make sure that your layers are done um, with care. Make sure that each layer is dry before you apply the next. And as always, I'm just dipping between the colours on my palette here, as you can see, going back to um, a little bit of the pink tone. This is the, uh, this is permanent rose. So everything's completely dry now. I'm pointing to Moon Glow here, but I actually decided to use Payne's Grey at this point. I'll talk to you a little bit later on about Moon Glow in, uh, as we go through this tutorial. So I'm using my number eight round to go outside the glass jar here and on the edge of the surface. And dropping in the Payne's Grey, um, just very gently. This is uh, just Payne's Grey on its own in a watery consistency and I'm just dropping this in wet on wet, which means that you wet the paper and then just drop it in. We just apply the water where we want the paint to go. This is a really light watery mix and I'm now just dropping in a darker value. So this is again Payne's Grey on its own and letting it settle into that lighter wash that we've just applied. By working wet and wet this way, it gives it that lovely soft blur. I'm just using my damp brush to merge that lovely pale wash into the paper. And I'm just dropping in a tiny bit of green. This is the same green that we mixed earlier on. So this will be the cadmium yellow pale with the French ultramarine. I felt that it had a tiny bit of the green reflected, which is why we're doing this. Don't have to be too fussy here. Just take that paint where you feel you need it and blend it through using that damp brush. Make sure that your brush is damp and not wet. Otherwise your colors will bloom and push that color back into the paper. I'm showing you here that if you clean your brush in your jar, the water will drip down the ferrule of the brush and onto your paper, which is why I kind of do it with this tiny little puddle on my palette here. It's just a little tip for you there. It doesn't flood the brush with water and makes your paint a lot easier to control. So this is the Payne's Grey mix again. I'm just using the number zero size round brush here. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll have heard me talk about spotter brushes many, many times. Spotters are the same as rounds, but they have a smaller, more sort of stubbier tip and it makes the application of paint super easy. I love these brushes. I've just decided to have a little bit of a change and I'm using um, rounds, but if you have got them, continue to use them because they are absolutely beautiful brushes and I will link them once again in the description box. So working around these little creases in the glass jar, you can see this is just the first layer of paint. So we have Payne's Grey in this really watery consistency. I'm taking this where I feel I need that value, where I need that color, just looking at my reference photograph for guide. And I'm also applying it to the base of the jar here, where you can see the base of the jar hitting the table surface like this. And once again, just blending it through. We don't want to have any hard edges, so just by giving it a little bit of a blend, we get rid of that hard edge. And we have Payne's Grey in a slightly thicker consistency now, going over the areas that we've already applied. 
As I said, this takes all the guesswork out and we can just apply it here in the lighter consistency, which let, makes it a, a lot less scary, I think. I really like the look of these tulips with that added sort of yellow and orange tone. I think they look um, really, really pretty. I hope you agree. So I'm just taking the light wash of Payne's Grey over here and once again using my flat synthetic brush, just really, really damp to blend those colours through. You can see this really, really gets rid of that hard edge really, really quickly. This works very well on mixed media paper. Just makes it very, very easy to blend those colours together. So this is the mid-tone of the Payne's Grey. It's dried on my palette a little bit now, so that makes it really, really easy to use. When your paint dries on your palette, it does make it a lot easier to control, particularly when you're working in smaller areas like this. Using the Payne's Grey to just add some detail here. Just enhancing this stem here. This is Payne's Grey with a tiny bit of green that I'm using. So the green is once again the mixture of cadmium yellow pale and French ultramarine. I'm blending it through. As I said, you don't need to be too fussy with the greens. As long as they look different, then that's absolutely fine. Going around the outside um, of the back here, just enhancing that base. This is Payne's Grey and there's also a tiny bit of a darker value on the bottom of the stem so I'm using the darker green mix as you can see and just adding a tiny bit more of the darker value there. Once again we're all dry so this time I've mixed all my yellows again so three puddles of yellow with the French ultramarine as before. And this time we're going to use Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. Now, if you're not familiar with this color and you don't have it, don't worry. You could use, you could just continue to use your Payne's Gray or if you've got a neutral tint, but this is a really special color. We're not using it to its true potential here. Um, I decided to use it because I had it in my palette and I hadn't used it for quite some time, but you'll notice, um, from the mix in my palette here that you can see it's separating. It's a granulating color that is rather magical when you use it wet in wet. Um, you can see it has this kind of purpley, greeny sort of separation taking place. But if you don't have that color, then don't worry. We are going to use it later on to darken up some of the values on the tulips. So if you want to use um, Daniel Smith's Moon Glow, go ahead. If you don't have it, you could use a neutral tint or even you could use a kind of dark purple tone if you've got any purples within your kit. You could also use that in a similar way to the way I'm going to show you later on. But for now, we're just going around the greens as before. I'm using my number four size silver line brush, but again, always use the brushes that you feel comfortable with. I'm just taking a tiny bit of the green tone over the top element like this. You can see that I'm just using it very, very lightly. I felt that the jar was looking a little bit too stark and um, I just needed a little bit of a green tone there. Like I said, we're not going to the photograph 100%, just using it as a guide. I've gone outside the pencil line here, so I'm just using my flat brush to remove that really, really easily like that. Now we're onto the moon glow. So I'm applying this to the base of the jar. Because the color is now dry, we're safe to do this. And I'm just using it to create that little bit of a shadow there. And once again, just blending it through. You'll see that this moon glow color separates a little bit on the paper, which is what we wanted it to do. It's just really magical. It's a lovely, lovely color. And if you have got it, then use it. So this is my number zero size round. And I mix in moon glow with the, um, the other color that we had on our palette. And we're using a mixture of the moon glow and that upper color to add the darker value. You could just use your Payne's gray here if you wanted to. 
just taking this line on the outside of the glass here. This is Moon Glow, but again, you could use your Payne's Grey. I'm just adding some darker values here and there. This is Moon Glow. And I'm mixing a tiny bit of the Payne's Grey mix in as well. Now we can cheat a little bit here by adding some of the darker value to that green mix by using the Moon Glow to create that really darker tone that we need to. Sometimes if you're building up green tones and you can't get that dark, or any tone, you don't have that darker value and you want it to be darker, you could add something like um, Payne's Grey or Moon Glow just to darken it up. So you can see by adding that color to that leaf that's folding over, it's made it look like a green color, but it has that really special darker tone. And just continue to add some green tones as you can see. Just outline in the stem here. And continuing to add some detail to the vase just by taking a line here. This is a number zero round again. Uh, I would say this is more of a liner brush. Um, this again is from Jackson's. It's a synthetic brush with a really fine point and really good for adding some detail as you can see me doing here. Super sharp, really lovely to use. And I'm just continuing to really take my time with this. You don't have to rush watercolour, you can just come back to it when you feel like it. It's not something that you have to rush to get finished. You can come back to it the following day or the following week. It's all about relaxing and enjoying in the process to create paintings that you can be proud of. So I mentioned earlier on that you can join our Facebook group if you want access to our um, reference photographs and line drawings, but you can also post up your finished paintings from our tutorials and have some feedback from our other lovely members and me if you want to. So do consider joining us there. Um, just adding some detail to the base of this little stem here and working through bit by bit. I'm just taking some of the Moon Glow mix here underneath the jar and just accentuating that shadow that we put in to make it sort of stand out a little bit more. So this is just Moon Glow on its own, sharpening up the base of the jar like this.
just adding a tiny bit of detail here and there. It's entirely up to you how much detail you want to put in. So I'm just sharpening up some of the edges using Moon Glow on this green part here. And a little bit of texture on this leaf that was initially a petal here. Back to the Moon Glow mix and just outlining this section. just to sharpen up that edge. And we've got a little bit of Moon Glow on the brush here. Adding some detail to the base. Some of the green tones, we have uh, Cadmium Yellow Pale with French Ultramarine there. This is the more yellowy tone that we mixed up earlier on. And just pulling that through. So we're going back to our original colours here of the Permanent Rose and the Cadmium Yellow Pale, mixing up Cadmium Yellow Pale with Permanent Rose to create this yellowy, orangey tone. I'm just applying this to these small sections here. I'm using some really light brush strokes to create some veining, some pattern here and there. This is with permanent rose on its own. You can be as detailed as you want to at this stage. I'm just applying this um, permanent rose colour on the outside edge of these petals to give them a little bit more depth and some tonal value. Remember that watercolour painting is all about building up your values as well as your colours. By having a too flat a value or tone, it can look sort of really flat on the paper. So by adding our darker values, it really gives your paintings a boost, as you'll see in a moment as I work through the petals one by one. So add these in a sort of curved motion. You don't want your veins to look flat, so just do a sort of upside down C shape, if you like, just to create a little bit of, um, just a little bit of a pattern as you work through. So you can see I'm making those little veins go in the way that the petal is naturally falling. I've just added a little bit of green to this yellow because I felt that there was a line coming through the middle of this petal here. And we're back to permanent rose, just to create some, um, some lines on this petal at the top. Just working through petal by petal. I'm using a really light touch, no pressure is needed to do this. You want to keep it really, really light. I'm applying a block of colour here down the bottom, again to darker the value and just blending it through. And the same on the bottom. I'm just adding some of the yellow, um, once again to create a little bit of interest, not true to photo, but I really don't mind. I think it gives it an extra dimension somehow. So just continuing to build up those colours. So this is permanent rose that I'm just applying to the light wash that we applied at the beginning and dropping in some of the orange. So of course the orange is a mixture of cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow pale with permanent rose.
So I'm using my number zero sort of liner brush here just to add some detail. You can you can continue to use your whichever brush you feel comfortable with, but I found that because of the fine point with this, I was able to achieve a sort of finer line than I did with my other brush. So just continuing the process, working through petal by petal. I'm just adding some of the yellow tone here just to build up those colors. By adding these glazes over the existing washes really makes these paintings come to life. And by watercolour glazing, I just mean that you're applying a wash of colour or a layer of colour on top of the existing colours that we've applied. This is called watercolour glazing. So if you are new to watercolour painting, this is the kind of this is what I'm talking about when we're talking about glazing over our colours. So I've added Moon Glow to Permanent Rose here, which gives it this kind of purpley tone. And by, by applying this colour to our pinky colours that we've already applied, really does give it an extra boost of tonal variation. We were talking about tonal, tonal variation earlier on. So by adding this darker value to the outside of the colours that we have already applied, it really packs a punch. So once again, everything's dry at the base of this petal here. We're applying the Moon Glow with the Permanent Rose. And if you don't have Moon Glow, as I said, you could use a purpley tone to do this. Any colour purple that you've got within your kit will work. And you can see that just by applying this to the outside areas or any area that we want to add some tonal value, we can continue this way. I'm also going to be applying this to the little petal that we see hanging over the side there on the right hand side to the base of this just to make it stand out. So at this point it's all about repeating the process. We've just got a few more minutes of this tutorial left. I'm going to stop talking and let you listen to this in peace. Be sure to stay right until the end where we will put up the line drawing and reference photograph for you to screenshot so that you can join in. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.